Right. So this is uh, this is spectromatic velocity. Hey, are you doing a bit of an app? That's why I just went out there. Oh right. Okay. Yes. Oh, sorry. I was just looking up to find out exactly when the first spectromatic was actually sent out. Mm -hmm. And when was it? 2016? Yeah? Probably yeah. a year, two or three years. 2017. It was 17, yeah. Yeah, 2017. Um, yeah, I seem to remember all the summer holidays. Yeah, I'm looking at in July. It's like to like physical discs, July. There you go. So it must have been a the horrific day when all the air race. Oh, there you go. You right. There's a photo. Yeah, that's the photo of them all alive in, which is the second of August. That was your update then. I've been on the road to write all the envelopes out like I've bought a label printer now. I've got the price of Christmas looking too. Right, so what I've got, what I've got here. Yeah, what I've got here is um, a very early demo of the third film of 2.5 The Lost Tapes. Um, it's, it's incomplete and there are some sound issues at the moment in that the sound levels haven't been mastered. Because what happens is when I finish the first, well the final draft of the film, it goes to my sound engineer who masters the audio to get it all perfect. He's also the composer who does the original reimagining of the film. Also, you'll hear kind of a Western type theme because there's going, to be a West, there's going to be a lot of Western imagery in the film. Kind of a riff off uh, Sergio Leone and Ennio Morricone. Um, but I've not filmed the sequence yet. I'm doing that when I get my son, God, my son's next weekend. Uh, and we're going to be kind of dressed as gunslingers and be complaining like mad about doing it. We're going to do what the old. Um, Cal McCoy from Fields of the Net, we're to do is cover them in flour to make it look like we're dusty gunslingers, so we're going to do a mess about filming, a couple of days filming doing that. Um, so anyway, I think on here now, there are clips from interviews with Mark Idols, uh, Dr. Mark Idols from Quicksilver, um, Sam Brattel from Design Design, there's some Mel Croucher, and Andrew Houston and uh, some little clip from Rick Dickinson which hasn't been seen before. So I'll stick it on and the lights out. No issues. Okay. Any questions? <laughs> How long has it taken you to do them now? Is it is it taking you quicker or longer because you're going into more detail than this one is quicker thing. because I've got I've got a lot of the existing footage. Yeah. What really takes the time is setting up the interviews, going out and meeting these guys and girls like that. And we get to the interviews a lot. And, and, um, that's what takes up the time because obviously I'm a teacher as well, so I'm working <coughs> full time and I've got kids every second weekend and they moan at me if I take them on yeah. to go and film shoots. So um, I can only do it every second weekend, so I'm, I'm kind of limited on yeah. interviews. Um, put it together. Isn't too bad. I mean, I was looking, I, all I saw in that was flaws. Like the clips were too long, um, the game clips were too long, the interviews were too long, and needed cutting and mixing up a bit, um, so there's more pace. Um, and also, looking at the game clips, it reminded me how frustrating a lot of the games are. Like <laughs> Underworld and Nodes of Ease. I can see, yeah, yes, like, you kept missing the jumps. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 How tenacious we must have been when we were. Like younger people play yeah, on these yeah. games like just over and over again like what do you check silly my mind you know like God I must have spent years of my life on my mind getting through to like screen what is it solar energy plays. Yeah that's the one I got saying yeah that was the one I uh I finished playing my mind on that screen I can get past it yeah. Is there anyone you've wanted to interview who has Lots. point blank refused? Yep, lots. <laughs> who who um, would you say is your biggest one that you okay. wanted but couldn't get? Or... Uh, Clive Sinclair. He's the top yeah. of my hit list. Uh, I believe he's very ill at the moment though. Mm -hmm. um, Rick Dickinson tried to get me in touch with him, but at that point Clive was in the hospital. And also sadly I didn't realise, but when I was interviewing Rick Dickinson he already had cancer. Mm -hmm. um, I just didn't know that at the time. Um, it was such a gentleman as well. So yeah, Clive Sinclair is top of the list. Chris Stamper's next. 
Well, yeah, good one. <laughs> <Come on. laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> tried, tried, believe me, I have tried. Just, it's like in the old, um, early 80s, you know, like when you, they wouldn't, the samples were not respond to yeah. yeah, even big, you know, they didn't do interviews at all, and he's still like, yeah. Well, they're still like, uh, Third on the list is Matthew Smith, which I've got a little crack at getting that one. Yeah, you can get more chance now, but yes, in the world. Yeah. So yeah. And I know people who know him. Yeah. And he's a bit more talking than he has been in the past. So yeah. Good chance. Yeah. I mean, my aim was to kind of get Crash Play Expo when he, did, he was there recently yeah. for the anniversary. Um, I was going to get Crash and, and try and dangle some money under his nose for an interview. But to be honest, you should have just got the Fab Cafe in the evening. He was totally smashed and he was talked to him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. The problem is, when you, when you film in that environment, the background noise kills your all. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. yeah. You wouldn't yeah. be able to film in there and then, but he, you'd have had a backboard to then go and yeah. see him yeah. after, to be honest. I'm working on that. He'll come in actually, though. He'll find the film. It's where the top three now. Yeah. There are others I've spoken to. Um, I was in touch with Rob Balker. No, he wrote Dynamite Band Games. Oh, okay. um, oh that's small house people though, he's, he's, he's sort of banished him. Yeah, um, and I got in touch with him about interviewing him. And he was, he was just he was just ranting at me about the situation of, was it Elite? Of the Vega? Oh, the, the, oh yeah. yeah. He yeah. was like, was all he was like, he was like, you can interview me if you make a film about the, the Vega and the, all the shit that's going on. Was it Elite or Vega? It was when they didn't pay the games the the for us royalties. Yeah, that was the problem. So he just ranted at me. It's like, I don't want to make a film like that. I want to make a film celebrating the spectrum. Mm. You know, yeah. I mean, it's a fair point, to be honest, but it's like an understanding point. Yeah. But yeah, at the end of the day, it's the positive side, not the vegan. Um, yeah. The not so positive side. I'm not really into, like, yeah. yeah. So I've got stuff that I can't publish. Like, yeah, sure. That people said us about Bruce Severus, for example. He's a character. He is a character. Um, <laughs> I mean, no, about him, probably. He, is about him. Yeah. he, he actually agreed to an interview, and then loads of people just messaged him saying, Don't want to be Bruce, Bruce Severus. It won't be good for the film. So um, <laughs> I took that as a piece of advice. I did, I did uh, see him a few times because he, um, he, he was, he was work, working uh, on Mark with Sam Clark at the time and uh, we the shows. Um, you know, when, when, when we were going around to the different shows, so uh, he used to uh, run the, the, the small fairs then. Yeah, yeah. But you know, the other twins clip um, about publishing a letter yeah. um, to, uh, about suing them, and that was Bruce Edwards' idea. He worked for Collins for that. And that was his idea to publish that letter. Yeah. It actually was Bruce and yeah. I had a really long, brilliant chat actually with Bo Jangrog, you know, he wrote Fairlight. Oh. Um, and Flash He's still, and, sorry? And Flash on the Sound, the art package. Oh, right, did it? Oh, yeah, it's yeah. one of the things you have to say. No artist, no artist, it's like a variation of that. Right, but for the Sound of the Extra Cool. Mm -hmm. Really nice. So, yeah, I mean, he's still on the cards for the interview, I just I have to go to Sweden to do it. That's a shame. <laughs> well, I've <laughs> right. got the budget at the moment. I wish I did. Um, but yeah, he's still up for an interview. Costa Panayi. Saying that right, mm -hmm. obviously, you know, um, got Alien Highway and TLL and Cyclone. Um, he just, he absolutely brilliant, lovely guy, and just said no. Uh, so I asked him again and again and again, and then I begged him, please, 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 I'll do anything, but just he just said no. He just said, I don't want to work for him. Um, but he was a gentleman about it, you know, he was really nice. And I was, that's a very great shame, so I, I would have loved to talk about him. But you know, conversely, I've met lots of amazing people. I've been enjoying to see every single one of them for many different reasons. Uh, How do you find doing this now compared with obviously your original stuff with the books and everything else? I mean, what is in like the fiction? I yeah, 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 exactly. I think when you write books, you just most authors are quite solitary and you just yeah. sit in your room yeah. and write. <laughs> um, and the editing process of doing the film like this is very similar to a writing process. You, know, you just sat with your PC. Um, it's a bit like a puzzle, you're working out a puzzle. Mm. It's a bit like writing a book, because you, you're writing it and then figuring out how to change the plot and which bits to add and take out, what gives the best experience for the audience. Um, the filming, I found, the interviewing, I found it quite stressful to begin with. Because, like, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of New Model Army, and there's a song about, like, 
not having any heroes, and I don't really have any heroes, you know, like, you could put Mick Jagger in front of me and I don't give a shit, you know, like, I admit, let's go and get a pint, but some of these guys, yeah. it was terrifying for me, yeah. and especially early on, when I was really new to interviewing, and I would, like, when I went to meet Steve Turner, I was a bag of nerves, I was absolutely terrified, and he's a lovely guy, he just went into his living room, he had his Christmas decorations up, and he, he just chundered away, you know, like, telling all these stories about writing Avalon and Dragon's Heart. Um, John Hare was one of the scary ones at the beginning as well, because he's, he's like, very astute and intelligent, and he doesn't pull his punches. You have to be really, you know, like, you have to know his stuff and know his stuff. And, um, Did you ever manage to get hold of any of uh, the news? Or any of the real times? Not yet, no. I think it's still based on the book. Alright, okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, old friend of mine was working with them when they were uh, on, on the panel con. Alright, okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm mean, still working on ideas for it. See, I want to do a Spectrumatic 3, but for it to be completely all new interviews. Nothing, nothing that's been used before. Um, I, was quite, I, I, I kind of nerves got less and less as I went along, and I really, you start to realise these people are human beings as well. You know. Um, but Sam and Bratel freak me out a bit. Because he's, he's such, if you, what, if you read his Facebook post, he's such a commotion, you know, like, he's such a... He's also a great He speaks his mind. He does, he certainly does. Nice. Nice. And um, just before we started filming, I was like, oh, I'm a bit nervous about this interview. He went, good. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Thanks for that. <laughs> but it was a very pleasant interview because we just sat out in the sun, a few beers. You know, and they're the best sort of interviews yeah. ever. Um, Clive Townsend was an interesting one because I got there and he was... He was a bag of nerves. Yeah, <laughs> and, um, and I started interviewing him, and I'd ask him a question, and I'd just get one word answers. Yep. No. I won't. I'm thinking, oh shit, if everyone's like this, I'm not more film. Because it was one of the very early interviews. Um, and I said, tell you what, let's have a break. Do you want a pint? Mm -hmm. Pint cider. Brilliant. He's like, I'm thirsty ninja. He's actually a black belt. I don't know if any of you know that. No, he's a black belt. I'm not even got you much discipline. Which is why I got a clip of him doing a jump forward roll over a hedge at some point. <laughs> but yeah, two pints, he loosened it up. After the third time, he was away. So, that, that taught me a lesson as an interviewer. Um, <laughs> get your subject drunk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is, there any, is there anything about the spectrum next? Yes. In, in, in this one or we're going to be in the third one? It depends on the timeline because. I'm waiting for it to come out, I think, but yeah. I know there's balls out, but I'm waiting for the final product to come out. Um, yeah. That happens, you know. I mean, yeah. People, but she was ready. ready. Yeah. I don't know, have they actually confirmed the one they've had sent over to them is okay? Because they're yes. sending it over. Yes, mm -hmm. done that. the updates come out, so it'll be going into mass production in the next month or so. Yeah, there was something about that that Simon Butler said, and I just couldn't put it in the film. Oh, God, yes. Probably get sued. And stuff he said about Bruce Everest. Well, yeah, well, yeah, that's just um... <laughs> and that's what he said about the other twins as well. If I know about the other twins, well, I'm going to find out the company. Yeah, 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 you told me that. Hey, I can use my discretion because I think technically as a publisher, yeah. I don't want to get sued. No, no, you don't want to get sued. Yeah, you don't want to get sued. Where is the phone? Give someone the right to reply as well. Sorry? You, you give Bruce a right to reply as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm not I'm not out on a witch hunt. Yeah. You know, I'm not out to slag people off and put them no, down no, and no. I just want to celebrate inspection. Because that's what, that was my childhood obsession. Sitting there in my bedroom. Are you covering new game development as well? Say again? Are you covering new game development? Just... Sorry, so, I, mean, I am I am aware of what's the, um, the first ones, yeah. Are you covering new game development? Yes, on? there's a chapter in on the home, homebrew scene yeah. in the second film, which is... Um, yeah, I think like Luke Bordone, uh, Mate Yan, um, uh, Graz Richards who runs Monument Software and they publish stuff. Yeah. Um, Simon Uliak who, who runs Chronosoft, you know, they're, they're, they're publishing new stuff all the time, so yeah. And Jonathan Paul Bell Frost. Jonathan I saw, yeah, Jonathan well, that's it, I saw his name come up on there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've interviewed him a couple of times now. Um, I was a gentleman and in, in the, this 2.5, I've actually been talking to quite a few people about the new new games. You know, like, 
in the Crush Animals, the recent uh, fusion box Crush Animals, some of the new, newer games that have been coming out, so we've got clips of them to put in and do a new chapter on the Robin Hood scene. Well, I'm going to speak to you, Jason. You don't want to get out of the door, but you see where it does so. Oh, right. Oh, did you really? That's yeah. What, yeah, that's what I was just curious. I'm not saying just said to the That is a nice cue, Michael. Come on. Get him outside. He's in the pot next door. Yeah. That is a nice game, by the way. I'm not using the van, I imagine. No, no, no. It was, it was written before any of those. Yeah. It wasn't. Um, who was it? It was. What was the, the engine? Oh, was it Andrew Ivey who did one? He was trying to do an engine at the same time. Mm. I think it was Simon, um, it was, it was probably the name of Simon. It was all right about that same time. Yeah, that came out, yeah, this was finished about a month after mine, so I was trying to get mine out before it. <laughs> but yeah, no, there weren't any multicolor games, so it's, yeah, it's a custom oh, right. thing for Yeah, yeah. 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 That's yeah. Nice. yeah, I think it was Andrew Owen who did a sort of engine. Yeah. It was based on some stuff, I mean, it was, um, so I, can, I can never remember the real name. <laughs> yeah. Guess man, he was the one. Um, he was he gave us an hint about the demo yeah. codes right, right there, engines. It's Don Robinson, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. Yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah, the, 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 the yeah. That's it. I, I asked Andrew Houston about it because they used it. He was copying. What was it? It was, it was the Atari that was doing that first, or the color yeah. switching on the line. Mm -hmm. Then they did it on. Commodore 64 type or something, it's Ali Track on it. Yeah. And um, yeah, Robinson was just trying to copy on the title screens. But he, he just had, you know, it was the same colour across the band, so yeah. it wasn't a bit of surprise or anything like But yeah, I nearly mean, got beaten to the punch as well. What was it? It was the Boxall thing. That was the Boxall, Bozoxall, or whatever it was. It's a, it's a, um, Shoving box, shoving crates then. But um, yeah. he was really used to Andrew Owens. Okay, but yeah, and then he got off and he got off on. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's not too far away, you know, it's nice. But you know, the Nirvana one was quite good because all those other ones were in columns and Nirvana and managed to do the full screen width thing. Mm. And that half the color, vertical color resolution. Mm. So I wouldn't use that one. But yeah, you get the, nearly the full screen. So, it's cool when the little shark came around and brought his next yeah. platform in a, in a German spectrum cage. Yeah. I've got a pre-production board about that, but I've never actually fired it up. <laughs> uh, when I tried, there were so many changes over, changes over with the um, firmware, you know, you need to play on it. I was waiting for them to stick, to pick a version of the firmware for it. And, uh, it must be coming soon. Well. The next. Yeah. By the end of the day. Q3, I think you promise. I've always yeah, yeah, yeah. I've always been annoyed since the, you know this one to eight came out, but they didn't actually put you know that time its graphics mode on that. Yeah. Chance to. Yeah. Yeah. Any more questions? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah.